Hi, I'm Stan Houston, and we're doing this program in Tucson, Arizona on the 1st of April. It's April Fool's Day, but I'm not fooling you. We're back to learn more about how storytelling is the most effective. No, storytelling is the only effective means of communication. And if you want to sell you, market you, and build your business, if you want to achieve anything of greatness in which you have to persuade people, promote yourself, again, we're going to learn on part two of storytelling that you must tell stories. And that's coming up on The Marketing Life. right. Welcome back. It's more stories about storytelling. As we say, tell me a story. Then I will buy you and I may buy from you. And we're on part two. In effect, we are looking for the stories to tell. We're going to start looking for those stories. And perhaps we can find some ways by going back to some classic stories that may actually help us. Perhaps you're even going to think about some movies that were great stories that moved and challenged you. Now again, I'm going to do what we would do all the time. Let me tell you a story. I'm going to, however, take a little time. Just pretend you're a little bit younger, but you know what? No matter how young or old we are, we love to hear a story. So with your permission, I'm going to uh, read you a story by a friend of mine named John L. Ridge, and it's simply called The Epic. On the back cover, it simply says this, life for most of us feels like a movie we've arrived to 40 minutes late. Doesn't that kind of paint a picture of sometimes the way we feel about things? Our life might be a story. Now, with your permission, can you just listen as I read from John Eldridge's The Epic? And it starts by saying this, I wonder what sort of tale we've fallen into. From J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Remember the story? Remember the movie? It's been quite a journey for Frodo and Sam when the little gardener wonders this. Ever since they've left home, they've encountered more wonders and more dangers that they could possibly have imagined. The battle on Weathertop, the flight to the ford, the beauty of Riverdale, the dark mines of Moriah, where they lost their beloved Gandalf. Their fellowship has fallen apart. Their friends are now far away on another part of the journey. Into the shadow of Mordor they have come. Two little hobbits and their cooking gear on a journey to save the world. It's at this point Sam says, I wonder what sort of tale we've fallen into. Sam could not have asked a better question. He assumes that there is a story. There is something larger going on. He also assumes that they have somehow stumbled into it or been swept up into it. What sort of tale have I fallen into, is a question that would help us all a great deal if we wondered it for ourselves. It just might be the most important question we ever ask. Life, you'll notice, is a story. Life doesn't come to us like a math problem. It comes to us the way a story does. You don't get to know, you have to enter in. Take the journey as it comes. The sun might be shining. There might be a tornado outside. Your friends might call and invite you to go sailing. And then again, you might lose your job. Life unfolds like a drama, doesn't it? Each day has a beginning and an end. There are all sorts of characters, all sorts of setting. A year goes by like a chapter from a novel. Sometimes it seems like a tragedy. Sometimes like a comedy. More often it feels like a soap opera. Whatever happens, it's a story through and through. All of life is a story. 
Think about that. And what really engages us is when someone tells a good story. Now, a number of years ago, um, there was a movie, probably one of the biggest gross movies around. I don't mean gross in terms of it being a gross movie, but it grossed a whole lot of money. Remember? The Titanic. Now, I want you just to think a little bit about what happened there. That story. Now, for many of you are saying, and I used to think this too until I better understood what James Cameron was all about, this is kind of a mushy old love story, kind of a chick flick in the midst of a tragedy. And, yeah, we thought about it that just hundreds and thousands and perhaps millions of adolescent teenage girls went to the movie to see Leonardo DiCaprio uh, do his thing. And so it kind of was, yeah, can't you? Yeah, yeah, not much. But you see, that's where we make a mistake. What we need to understand is that that hit a core because one of the fundamental points of every good story is a good story is about being rescued. That's right. Stories are about things being rescued. I just think about it. There it was. And in one of the ending parts where the now old lady is talking about the adventure she's gone on, and she thinks about Jack, and she says, now listen carefully, he saved me in every way possible. Not just that he saved her life, but he saved her from the life she was going to live. He saved me. Good stories are about being rescued. That was the appeal of Titanic. Deep down inside of us, there is this deep desire. We'd like to be rescued. Our life has difficulties in it. And as you approach people, all of them have hopes and dreams and aspirations and problems. And when they come to you, whether it's the fact that their car is broken down, their transmission is gone, in some small way, they're saying, rescue me helpful. Be helpful to me in some way. I think particularly of this when I remember the film, and some of you remember this, uh, Ron Howard did a great job on Apollo 13. Now, do you remember that film? It's the story of that uh, moon launch that went bad, and the entire film is how do we bring these men back? How do we rescue them? And we see it. And do you remember that scene? When just before they're going to enter the Earth's atmosphere, there will be no radio contact for about three minutes. And the family is there and everyone's wondering, will they get through the atmosphere without being burned alive? Will they survive? One minute, two minutes, three minutes. They should be regaining contact. Nothing. Three and a half minutes. Still nothing. Four minutes. Their eyes begin to tear up. People begin to look down in disappointment. Oh my God, the rescue attempt has failed. And then all of a sudden, we hear it. We hear the radio crackle. It comes through. Apollo 13. And then all of a sudden, the men on the aircraft carrier, the people there see the parachute. They're home alive. Now, I tell you, when I see that film, I begin to tear up. They were rescued. Now, I want you, as you go about your day, and as you're trying to help people, look for this rescued theme. Now, sometimes it doesn't happen. And that's how we define a tragedy. The, the rescue didn't happen. The protagonist did not overcome. And it's sad. Oftentimes, just like in Titanic, the uh, hero is the one who rescued and saved others. 
and oftentimes at the cost of their own life. Now, I want you to think about how you, in a way, do some rescue work in the work you do. How do you help people? Now, I want you to think about that and particularly about the story you need to tell. Have you ever been rescued? Has something happened to you that has saved you? Perhaps the reason you use the product and service you're all about is because it has worked for you. It has helped you. Now, one of the first stories you have to be ready to tell is your story. You know, if you're selling insurance, why are you doing that? If you're selling automobiles, why are you doing that? If you're selling mortgages, why? What happened to you? I'd like to know. Are you operating out some deep passion or thing you'd like to do or thing you'd like to be? I remember somebody in the insurance business who said, I joined the insurance business because my daddy went out hunting and he didn't come back. And I know that I wanted to help people just in case that happen to somebody else. See, what is your story? So from now on, I don't care what it is, you need to come up with your story. And it may be a three minute story. Better yet, you have one minute to tell your story. You need to have that one minute story in which what you do is you help people discover who you are. Remember, they want to buy from someone they know, someone who has a similar story, someone they trust. I just want to share a fun story. One of the uh, gentlemen I was working with, particularly as he worked in insurance, uh, was a young man. You know, you have to start out somewhere. And uh, a lot of people wondered, I wonder if uh, there's something about him. Uh, is he too young? Well, what can we do about that? But he was funny, and he had a great sense of humor. And uh, one time when I was working with him, he said to me, almost in a childlike way, Stan, do you want to see a picture of my dog? <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. And there in his briefcase, and he was all dressed up, and he looked really sharp, well-dressed. Remember our program on image? kept a very good image, he was just kind of young. And uh, I said, yeah. And he showed me the picture of his black Labrador dog. And we started to talk about dogs, and about the dogs I had had when I was young and why we loved dogs. I said, you know what? I'm going to challenge you. Sometime, you just might want to have the courage to tell people about your dog. Tell the story about why you chose a dog. He reported back to me. His sales began to go because he broke the ice in a fun way. He told his story. And then he'd say, after telling his little story about why he was really in the business and it was about why he wanted to help people and why he wanted to build his own business and some of his hopes and dreams and why he wanted to help people. It wasn't about the product. It wasn't about his company. And then with a smile, he'd say, do you want to see a picture of my dog? <laughs> and people, okay. And you know what happened? People began to exchange stories. Because everybody has a dog story. Even if they don't like dogs. Somebody would say, well, I don't like dogs. Well, why don't you like dogs? Remember, if you want to work with people, it's not only do you tell stories, but you listen to their stories. I oftentimes say to people now, tell me your story. And sometimes they say, oh, what do you mean? I don't have a story. And I just simply say, well, everybody has a story. Tell me yours. Where did you grow up? And instead of the what do you do, where are you from, that kind of question, I ask people to start exchanging stories. Now, tell people your story. Then I encourage you to do it this way. Tell me a story of how you have been useful. 
Don't tell me about the company. Tell me about how you've been useful to somebody. Now that's the key word. You've done something that is useful. My daughter, Megan Houston, has written a book uh, that describes how she learned as a young businesswoman that it didn't matter how cute and charismatic and creative she was, that if she was going to be successful in New York City, and remember, if you can make it there, you can make it everywhere, she had to learn that it was how useful was she. If she wanted her career to grow, if she wanted to persuade people, if she wanted people to do what she wanted them to do to affect their behavior, she had to create a story of usefulness. They had to know she was useful. Tell me a story of how you've been useful, particularly in these ways. Um, you may tell me a story about how things ended differently that uh, you didn't like. Oftentimes, uh, I will mention, you know, I'm sorry, but someone didn't use the things that I wanted to. Someone had a bad experience. And so you tell a story of how you've been useful, how you've been able to help people in doing the right thing, doing the good thing. And by the way, nobody can argue with a story. And then you tell other stories. I mean, I remember this lady was in the insurance business and she told. And it was a sad story about how she had to raise three of her young siblings because upon the death of her mother and father, there was no insurance, and life was really a struggle. Now, the nice thing about it, the story had a good ending. It finally, because of her courage, she was able to make it go, but as she said, some people didn't. It could have ended poorly. And I remember that story, and there were a bunch of hard-nosed insurance agents, and some of them started to cry, and some of them wrote checks to her because she simply told a story, first of all, of how, in effect, something ended poorly, but then someone came along and helped her and had been useful to her. Now, as you do that, um, tell me a story that has moved you to change. From time to time, I just simply have to tell my own story. Things that have moved me. Things in terms of the things I've bought and the decisions I've made that have led me to change my life. Think about those kinds of stories. Think about fun stories. They could be dog stories. Later on, my friend, when he got married, just simply said, would you like to see a picture of my wedding? We got married at Disney World. And again, uh, there was another picture and there was another story. So I challenge you now, where do the stories come from? They come from your life. That's why we call it the marketing life. They come from you. So what's your story? Why are you doing what are you doing? How have you been useful? How have you been helpful? You don't need to brag. You don't need to do facts and figures and bar graphs. How have you been helpful and useful to somebody? Tell a story where, unfortunately, it didn't turn out well because perhaps you weren't able to help them or they made some different decision. I remember someone who told the story of, you know what, because they didn't take care of this long-term care insurance need, my family lost $350,000 off their estate. It didn't end well. We certainly wish we would have made a different decision. And then tell stories of how you can help people understand some of the ironies of life, the goodness of life, sometimes the tragedies, but oftentimes the joys of life, and how you have been able to help people understand that you can change, that things can change. Now, later on, you're going to get real serious about this, and we'll talk about this next week. There's a guy named Robert McGee, and he spends a, a lot of his time now as a story writer. And you might want to check this out. Now, I've given you some other sources in uh, our first section. It's called Robert McKee Story. 
substance, structure, style, and the principles of screenwriting. And he teaches you, as he teaches me, how to really get serious about writing and finding stories. But remember, the stories are not out there as much as they are in your world and in your experience. And if you want to affect people, if you want to move people, if you want to sell them on an idea, if you want them to marry you, if you want them to believe in you, if you want them to follow you, if you want them to vote for you, the best way to affect people's behavior is just that. Tell them a story. From the very beginning of time, we have always said, once upon a time, let me tell you a story. People are looking for people who will rescue them and help them and be useful to them. Tell them stories of how you can be just that person. Storytelling, the only effective means of communication. And that's part two of our story. Next week, part three on where we find some of these stories and how we begin to tell them. I'm Stan Houston, your Marketing Life Coach, thanking you for listening to my story. All the best and blessings, and bye for now.